What's up everybody? In this episode I will be showing you how to build a staghorn fern hanging planters out of cedar fence pickets. I start by cutting the lengths to 10 inches long on the miter saw, being sure to keep the cut smooth and straight to avoid any of the splintering or the crazy angles you can get if you let the board move. Next I move over to the table saw and I set my fence at 1 inch. You'll need about 31 pieces total. I can get five out of each 10 inch piece. So with a six foot picket, that's about 35 pieces that you should be able to get just by running them down the table saw. Now these boards don't have to be smooth, it's just by preference. If you want them smooth though, I would highly recommend to just sand the whole fence picket prior to cutting. Um, on mine, I actually used the 13 inch planer by Viver and I just ran them through and just barely taking off the rough edges. You don't want to take a whole lot out, but just take off just enough to make them smooth. And then when I get done building them, I usually go back and just do just a little sanding if I see anything rough. But, but I highly recommend sanding them. They look a lot better, but you don't have to if you don't want to. It's just, again, it's all preference. If you like them rough cut, they look just as good to me either way. So now I'm just lowering the blade on my table saw and moving the fence back. It's kind of give me a square of a back, like a square backdrop. So I'm just laying out the base. You want to put down two skids on the bottom. And I like to put down some wood on top just in case I have a brad nail that goes rogue and I don't want to damage the top of the table saw. But so I put two skids down on the bottom and then I put one on each top at each end and I check for square. I'm using waterproof wood glue here, Type Bond 3. So when I get them where I want them, I'm using a one inch brad nail just to secure them in place till the glue dries. So I just continue to move around, flip it back around to the fence because you just want to keep it square. If you don't start off square, you're going to end up with some kind of crazy art form that uh, you may or may not enjoy. So now just using the cut pieces, I put them in there to kind of get some spacing and put glue on every piece. And then as you get to the end, you'll notice if you didn't thin the boards down enough on the planer, as you're about to see, I just pull the spacing out now and just kind of eyeball them in to where they all are the same distance apart. So once I get them all out to where I want them, I just turn around with the brad neller and go ahead and just nail them all down before I start my next row. So on the bottom row, I do seven planks across. And if you don't want to do that many, of course, like I said, it's all by preference. You do as many as you like. Seven looks the best to me, and it's kind of more like the ones I saw at a big box store. So now I just put glue on each one, and I start up against the fence again. And I nail every one across. And so you want to continue this on the other side, and then you'll just start laying your single rows as you go, keeping them glued, keeping them square, and you just build it up. And I think I went eight high. You may not want to go that high. You may want to go higher. The choice is yours. Just stack them up until you think it looks good or until you just like the way it looks or you can make it just like mine, whatever you prefer. But either way, just have fun doing it. It's a lot of fun to play with these things. I like doing them over and over and changing them up and just different things just to see what I can come up with. So now at a different angle, I believe this is probably row four I'm starting to put on. It's actually starting to take shape and look like something. So when you get around in here, you know, you kind of get a feel of what it's going to be. And then you can kind of decide how high you want it. So have fun with it. Do what you like. If you're going to put a staghorn fern in it, then I would still go up about eight inches. If you're going to put a different kind of plant, then that's just up to you. You don't want it to be out in the wind and the wind to blow it over and make it fall out or anything. But So I'd usually try to go at least eight high if I can. So now on the top row, which I guess technically is the ninth row, you're going to have two that are going to be shorter because you want them to sit on the inside. So just basically measure what your distance is across. And then I go back over to the miter saw and just cut both of them. And of course, when you come back, they should fit pretty tight, not, not tight enough to have to knock them in, but they should be just tight enough that they kind of just sit in there comfortably and pretty tight. So now I like to just go back over to the project and check fitment 
before I get the glue everywhere and then realize that I cut them wrong. So see what it's going to look like now when the piece is finally dropped in. So now I just take them back out and I get my glue and I go ahead and run it the whole length of the last row and then put some on each end of the boards as well just for extra sturdiness and you know protection from your plant getting dropped on the ground. So then once I get it secured in place with the glue I just drop a brad nail in the center just to hold it basically again and just until the wood dries. So when you get done, you should have two that looks about like this. So now using my slide rule, I just set it to a half an inch and I just measure from each edge and just mark a little pencil line to drill holes for where my eye bolts will go for the hanging part of the basket. So now I'm just coming in with a small drill bit just to drill pilot holes in all the corners. You want to do this because sometimes on these little cedar pieces when they get inch wide or less and you start trying to run a screw down in them, they will split open on you. So I just drill a hole right next to the brad nail hole because you don't, you know, you don't want to hit your brad nail either. So I just go in real easy and I go in probably about a half inch, three quarter inches deep. And the eye bolts I got, I picked up at a big box store. They're real easy to find and they're very, very inexpensive. So I got those and I go around and I just kind of pilot hole start them just a little bit. And what I normally like to do is I run them in by hand a little ways and then I like to go back sometimes with a pencil. Usually if I use a pencil to roll them in, if they feel like they're going to start getting too hard to turn in or maybe split the wood, usually if I'm using a pencil, I can tell that I'm about to have an issue, so then I know to back them back out. So just continue on with your eye bolts going to each corner and just run them in as far as you can or as far as you want to by bare hand. And if you're like me and you made two of these, then go ahead and just start them in the other one as well. Just go around corner to corner and just run them in by hand as much as you want to or as little as you want to and then just find an object that's kind of softer than a metal screwdriver so that's why I highly recommend a pencil or a small scrap piece of wood something like that that when you put it through the eye and you start turning it you can tell exactly how much tension you're getting on it because it, it would about break your heart if you got this point in the project and just turned it and broke one of your pieces so you don't have to go real deep either if you want to go in real deep you can you don't have to i usually just run them in about until it uh, hides all the threads of the eye bolt so it's basically just preference and just keep going around and i try to make them all even and i try to make them all turn the same way and that is it. All left to do now is to add some sort of small chain, small string, bedlam wire, whatever you prefer. If you followed along, you should have something that looks really nice and is ready to be hung up by the porch. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am so glad to be back doing these again. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. If you would, please remember to like and subscribe on the way out. And I'll see you on the next one.